In 2022, I graduated from Cambridge University with a Master's in Chemical Engineering after studying for four years. I completed my first year with a 2-2 and after a lot of trial and error, I graduated with 80% in my master's thesis. Hello, my name is Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss a study tip that transformed my academic results and hopefully if you keep watching, will transform yours too. So first of all, why should you be listening to me? I was a straight A star student until I got to university and the workload overwhelmed me and I could not, no matter how many study techniques I tried or how many YouTube videos I watched, I could not find a study technique that worked for me. And after a lot, lot, lot of trial and error, I finally found the study technique that nobody talks about. And I'm gonna share my whole experience with you, backing up all of my points with reputable studies so that you can elevate your academic performance. So let's get straight into it. You need to be working less. Now, obviously, how does that even work? Why should I work less if I want to do well? But I'm gonna take you through this whole process of how working less literally changed my whole university experience and got me my final grade. Let's take it back to the work process that gave me a final grade of a 2-2. And you're going to be surprised by this one. So let's look at a typical day. I would wake up at 5.30am, maybe make a cup of tea or something, and then between about 6 and 9am, I would do two of my lectures for the day whilst having my breakfast. I would then get ready for the day, and between about 9.30am and 1pm, I would then make notes on all of the lectures I'd watched that morning, or lectures from the day before. I would then have lunch and go to the gym, and then between about 4 and 6pm, I would do uni work. So things like question set, any essays, things like that, that would be my uni work slot. I would then have dinner, and then from 7 to about 9, 10pm, I would continue doing any uni work questions, and then pre-read my lectures in the morning. Now, you may hear this and think, well, that's a great day. It's a very, very productive day. I got the gym in. I got all my meals in. That's what I used to think as well. And the funny thing is, when I was doing these days, I thought I was a productive queen. Like, I literally, like, my ego was like, woo, look at me go. I am literally working so hard. I'm up so early. You know, I'm up before everyone else. Like, I'm getting the extra work in. I am so leaving with the first class this year. I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. Now let me explain to you what is so wrong with that day. So in total, with the day I just described, that totals to 11.5 hours of studying in that one single day. Why did this not work? It all comes down to being able to study effectively. Working a ridiculous amount of hours a day is completely romanticised and ultimately when you're putting all this work in and putting more effort in, you'd expect to do very well. It's very understandable to think this when you look at influential people who work ridiculous hours. But what we need to understand is the difference between these people and you studying. So let's take Elon Musk, for example. Elon Musk claims to work 120 hours a week. That's about 17.2 hours a day, seven days a week. So it seems like that should be the goal. He's a very successful person. You should aim to work in the same way as him if you want to achieve what he has achieved. This is wrong because the type of work is very different. So Elon Musk works 17.2 hours a day. Okay. But the work that he does in that day is very different to the work that you'll be doing when you're studying. That 17.2 hour day will consist of phone calls, emails, travel, conversations with other people, meetings. And so a large portion of that day is not concentrated work hours. This is where we need to make a very clear differentiation between studying and working. These can be the same thing, but it's very important to know that these are not always the same. So where Elon Musk is working, and it includes all these other things like calls, mealtimes, travel, you are studying. Now studying is actually more of a deep focus style of working. Your studying includes deep focus, often on a very complicated task, such as understanding a mathematical concept and applying it, completing a research paper requiring complex understanding, or writing an essay on a topic you've never seen before. Each of these tasks require deep focus. You cannot deep focus for 17.2 hours a day. Now let's look at someone whose work does rely on deep focus and let's see how they work. Terence Tao is a renowned mathematician. At 10 years old, he became the youngest person in history to win the International Mathematical Olympiad. Terence Tao is often referred to as the finest mathematician of his generation. So let's see what he has to say about studying. Tao released an article all about the way that he works and I will link that article below. But one really important quote that I took from this was, my ability to do any serious mathematics fluctuates greatly from day to day. Sometimes I can think hard on a problem for an hour. Other times I feel ready to type up the full details of a sketch that I or my co-authors already wrote. And other times I only feel qualified to respond to an email, do errands, or just take a walk or even a nap. Tao talked in his article about studying for him comes in waves. 
Some days he can do a lot. Some days he literally just needs a nap. And this is so, so important. And this is due to deep focus. You cannot do 17.2 hours of deep focus as Terence Tao describes. And this is why setting yourself up to work ridiculous amounts of hours a day is not effective working and will not get you the grades that you want. And what's really interesting is I can completely vouch for everything that I have discussed so far. So I set myself up 11.5 hours of work a day and it was just impossible. Even though I did the work, I had no engagement in the work. I, to be honest, had no idea what was going on most of the time because I was so adamant to get through it there was no time to take a moment to understand it. And I ended up just reaching a point of pure exhaustion and this was very ineffective studying. So we've discussed what you should not be doing and you should not be studying for 11.5 hours a day. It's impossible. But now what should you be doing? A study by John Pencavel on the productivity of working hours discusses a reduction in productivity after somebody works more than 50 hours a week. This equates to 7.2 hours a day. Studying for less than 7.2 hours a day means you have increased energy and increased focus, which means you're more likely to enter a state of deep focus in which you can develop a deeper understanding of the work. Now, what's really interesting, especially if I compare it to how I used to work when I wasn't doing as well as I wanted, is a study done by psychologist Anders Ericsson, which suggests that people can't do more than four hours of deep work in a day. So if you're setting yourself up for 12 hour days, you are just setting yourself up for exhaustion, not for 12 hours of productivity. You want to be aiming for less than 7.2 hours a day on average. Some days you might do a tiny bit more, some days you might do a lot less, but that is good. That is not a bad thing. And what's so important to remember is the reason I'm saying this is the study technique that's not talked about is because it's a study technique that's almost frowned upon. You should be working hard. You should be putting the hours in. But sometimes putting the hours in does not correlate to doing well. So how can you make sure you're not overworking? Well, what I did to get my best result at university was I scheduled in fun. I scheduled fun activities with friends. I scheduled time for myself. I made sure to try my hardest, although easier said than done, to not think about work in my spare time. So when I wasn't working, don't think about it. Sometimes if you want to, if you're mulling on a complex problem, that is fine, you can think about that as you're going through your day. But if you have taken time away from work and you know you've got to go back to it, you need to try and turn off just so your brain can have time to reset and to bring your energy back. Okay, now I've given you all the facts. Now you're probably thinking, okay, so what do I actually do? How do I now study efficiently? Well. The next point kind of backs up the point I've just spoken about, working less. You need to stop making notes. Notes are, again, completely romanticised, especially on social media or like study pages, everything. Like, how pretty can your notes be? How, how many notes can you fit on a piece of paper? Notes are almost an egotistical form of studying where you can just show off your work and it makes you feel like you did really well, but actually did you understand anything that went on that piece of paper? Now, I am so, so guilty for this. I will put on the screen now my notes and um, every single sheet that you see on the screen right now is A3 paper. So I must have had, I had too many notes that they couldn't fill bedroom walls. They would be going out of rooms. I felt super proud of myself when I saw these notes. I thought, whoo, look at me go. Writing all my lectures, going through all of the content. They look good, they're color coded. Were they useful? Absolutely not. Did I understand anything on them? No. And obviously some people, notes will be really, really helpful for them, but stop relying on notes. And this is why. Writing notes is obviously a time consuming task. And if you've got a lot of content to get through, to then write notes on all of that, it's gonna take up so much time that you are going to need 11.5 hour days. And as we've just discussed, this is not effective and you will not learn efficiently from this. So if you have a lot of content and you don't have all of the time in the world, you need to let the notes go and you need to find a more effective way to study. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how I did that. So when I was writing these notes, it's called passive learning. So you literally just rewrite this information, you hope that you absorb it, you read it, you try to understand it, you move on, okay? Now passive learning does not create the deep connections in your brain that you need to be able to recall this information in an exam situation. 
So this is why we need to start active learning. So active learning is a way that you not only absorb the information, but you can reproduce it in a way that confirms your understanding. This form of learning allows you to analyze and evaluate the information, improving your understanding and ability to remember it. So how can I implement active learning into my work instead of just writing notes? I'm gonna give an example that's on engineering because obviously I studied chemical engineering. Okay, so first of all, let's focus on trying to understand the maths. What you want to do is you want to get a lot of paper a lot of paper. You do not want one sheet of paper because maths is chaotic. Maths should be chaotic if you want to understand it. And you want to go through your notes, you want to take a chunk of maths that you want to learn, and you are going to derive it, use it, turn it upside down, flip it on its head, basically learn it inside out quickly, and kind of just throwing all the thoughts you have in your head onto these pieces of paper. So by the end of each section of maths, you should have paper filled with just gibberish really, because obviously nobody else is gonna understand what just went through, like what happened in your head to work all of that out. You just want loads of maths all over the paper so that you can start to build all the connections between each equation. Well, that one derives that, and if I derive that, I can get to here. And once I've done that, I finally get to the equation I need. When you get to the exam, you've already created these connections in your brain, and so you know these equations inside and out. So now you've actively used these equations and built the connections in your brain that you need. Often this will require deep focus. So again, you can't spend masses and masses of time a day doing this. It's time to look at the wordy parts of your lectures or the information that you need to learn. Now, with wordy parts, you'd think, okay, this is where I can write notes. Again, no, we do not write notes. No note writing. What we're going to do instead is we are going to read through the notes and highlight interesting bits or bits that you might really, really need to remember. And then we are going to create little question cards at the end of each subsection topic, a little flashcard with about probably six to 10 questions on it regarding the topic that you've just studied. Once you've done that, you're gonna put it down and that's the end. Then every one to two weeks, what you're going to do is you're gonna come back to the work that you had studied one to two weeks ago you're going to read through all those notes. Now, I used to do this in the morning. So I'd wake up and I have already chosen the notes I'm going to read that morning, put them by my bed, wake up, I'd lie in bed, I'd be so relaxed, just reading through these notes, pick up my little question card, go through it in my head. Okay, what's this? Mm -hmm. Think about it, think about it. Okay, I've got the answer, check my answer. In a few months time, you're going to know these notes back to front and not once have you had to write them out you will have read them and gone over them and processed them so many times and gone back and answered questions on them so many times that not only will you know the notes back to front, you will also place the notes in compartments in your brain. Using this method, by the time I set the exams, I was so much more confident. When you're reading your lecture notes or the information that you're trying to learn, walk around your room, talk to yourself, go over the concepts, say them out loud, write things down randomly, anywhere in your room, pieces of paper, whiteboards. Be completely chaotic because this is how you're gonna create a deep understanding in your brain. This coincides again with needing to work less because if you are overworking, this method will not work. Your brain will be saturated and you'll be exhausted and you will not be able to retrieve information when you're going over your lecture notes or the content that you're trying to learn. Another reason we should be using active learning is because with passive learning, you are not training your brain to retrieve information or think outside of the box. So when you get to an exam situation and you need to apply your knowledge, you have not taught your brain to do that at all. All you've taught your brain to do is to try and absorb something. If you've been doing active learning, your brain is now trained to think deeply, try to retrieve knowledge right, right at the back of your head and look for the answer. Leading on from this point, my final study tip is past papers. And this is such an obvious one. Of course, doing past paper questions is always, always beneficial. Everybody says it. You, your teachers will say it, your lecturers will say it. And yes, it 100% is. But there are two ways you can do this. And I believe one of them is beneficial and one of them is completely and utterly useless. So the useless way is the way that I used to do it when I wasn't doing very well. And because I was on such strict schedules to get through the ridiculous amount of work I'd set myself, I would do all of the questions in exam time. So uh, in my university, we had half an hour for a question. I would time myself half an hour and try to complete the question. Now, obviously in this time, when you're just learning the information and you're not in the exam, that's really, really hard to achieve. So I'd reach half an hour, the question wouldn't be complete, and I'd look at the answers. Effectively, I've learned nothing. When I got to the exam, I looked at the question and I thought, oh, 
I have not in any way trained my brain to think deeply, to search for the answer because I've just spent so much time practicing in this silly time limit, panicking, not knowing what to write down, not finding an answer, and then looking at the answers and trying to learn from the answers. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't just looking at the answers to cheat. I tried to learn from the answers, but there's only so much you can learn from looking at information. You need to actively learn it. So what should you be doing? You should be getting a past paper question and just throwing yourself at it with no time limit. Get all the paper you need, jot down anything that you think, jot down any answer that could be even close to being right and make sure the answers are far, far, far away, out of sight, almost unreachable. In doing this, you need to not stress about how many questions you get through. So don't set yourself, I need to do all of the past papers for the exam because that's what I used to do. And yes, I got through all the papers for the exam and I didn't understand a single thing that went on the whole time. Whereas in my final year, I got through probably about half of the papers, but every paper I did, I threw myself at it. I spent hours thinking, even for one question. And obviously you can't do that in an exam. But I was training my brain to think deeply, think outside of the box. So when I got to the exam this time, I was prepared and I knew how to think deeply, how to retrieve information. And I also, had the confidence to face the question. When you haven't been doing well on past papers, your confidence is not going to increase. But if you throw yourself at past papers and you give yourself a limited time, slowly you'll get better and slowly you'll get more and more answers right and you'll start to think, oh, I actually can do this and I actually do know the answers. So as you go on and on and on, you'll get quicker, you'll get more confident and when you walk into that exam, you'll be able to back yourself, you'll be much better at reaching the time limit and there's a much higher chance of you reaching the answer. I think a super important statement to take away from this video is do not try to be a perfect studier or whatever you'd call it. It doesn't exist. Studying is chaotic. Studying should be chaotic, especially if you're doing a mathematical based subject because your brain needs to thrash this out. It needs to be given the opportunity to just throw answers at a piece of paper bring things together, break things apart so that you can then reproduce an answer in the correct form in an exam situation. Focus on active recall, challenge yourself with questions, take enjoyable breaks, see friends, plan fun activities and don't miss them. And most importantly, do not overwork yourself. So I'm going to bring the video to a close there. I hope the video has been helpful. And obviously, if you have any questions, drop them below and I will, of course, answer. Yeah, just do not make the mistake that I did. I genuinely overworked myself, had no enjoyment and did not do very well. It was only when I started to create balance and study without time limits that I actually started to learn a lot, lot more. So if you did enjoy this video, please do like and subscribe and I shall see you next week.